It's the golden question. How do I teach my baby to settle to sleep when I put him or her down? Stick around because I'm going to break this down and make sense of it for you today so you can teach your little one in the way that's right for him or her. It's because all little ones are unique that there's no simple answer or one magical way to do this. If there were, we'd all know it, right? But what there is that I can share with you is the scientific principles and the understanding of different personalities so that you can determine the best approach for teaching your little one how to settle to sleep and back to sleep and help them to get the nourishing, restorative sleep they need. And so do you. So what even is self-settling? It's a form of self-regulation, which is how we control our emotions and our reactions. At first, a baby has no idea how to put themselves to sleep and relies on you to do it for them. In the womb, they were lulled off by motion and sounds and the sleep and wakeful patterns didn't matter so much because the mother's body takes care of all the needs. But in the outside world, it's so different, but still so important that they get that sleep they need. Often what happens is we as parents continue to do it for them, meaning we put them to sleep by rocking them or feeding them to sleep or pacing around with them on us and holding them. And this is totally natural, of course. But the fact is, it's not sustainable, not long term, and it's very difficult when you have more than one as well. It'll also, in time, sabotage a little one's chances of practicing or becoming better at settling to sleep if it's continually done for them. So after those early few months of working on getting into some good rhythms and cues with your baby, somewhere between four and six months is a great time to begin helping your baby practice settling to sleep. And if you're way past this age, there's no time like the present to get on top of this. It's not too late. Here's how I like to explain self-settling. Imagine you're teaching your child to ride a bike. You wouldn't just pop them on a two-wheeler and expect them to ride it first time or even second time. You know it takes a lot of learning and practice. And if you did just put them on the bike and expect them to ride, that's the equivalent to just putting a baby down and expecting them to put themselves to sleep. No, we start with training wheels on a bike or stabilizers to get them used to the feel of pedaling and steering. And then we take off the extra wheels and we run along holding them up on the bike while they master their balance until we finally we can let go and off they go on two wheels all by themselves. It's bit by bit, starting with doing it for them and then moving to doing it with them and assisting them as they get better and better at it, gradually reducing our input so that we do less and less and they're doing more and more until they master it. This is my philosophy when it comes to teaching a little one to self-settle and it works, not just temporarily, but long term. In my book, The Sleep Nay System, you'll learn about the fade out approach and regulated responding. Both of these use this philosophy, providing your input and helping your little one to develop an essential and vital skill. Both approaches are responsive, meaning you're never ignoring your little one and always responding. It's just a case of what that response needs to look like to be effective for your little one's unique personality and character. Some need very close contact, while others do better with less fuss and a bit more space. I'm going to give you three things to consider. Is your little one more laid back or very alert? You can use our temperament cheat sheet to find out. If they are super alert, you might find regulated responding is a better approach, as they can be overstimulated by your efforts to soothe them constantly in the room. Does your little one rely on something that you need to do to or for them in order to fall asleep? If so, you'll likely find the phase out approach is more suitable as you effectively wean this particular sleep onset association and introduce a more sustainable way to fall asleep. Do you struggle to even get your baby down for sleeps and find yourself holding him or her to sleep every time? then you can check out my episode on my Nano Night Night method, which teaches micro steps for getting your baby down in their own sleep space before even commencing one of the approaches for teaching your little one to self-settle. 
once you know which approach to go for, it's all about a consistent bedtime routine, settling to sleep in the same way every bedtime, and a consistent response to each and any waking in the night. It doesn't need to be complicated. Knowing what to do and how to do it is the biggest hurdle. Then it's about total commitment to seeing it through and doing this wonderful thing for your little one because once he or she can settle to sleep and back to sleep, they'll be able to sleep for the longer stretches and get the deep, impactful sleep they need for their brain development, health, mood, and well-being. Far better to give them this gift sooner than later when it can impact school, learning, socialising, and much more. If you need help, we're here for you with a range of packages to suit your needs. So don't struggle alone trying to figure it all out when help is here. Check out our Dream Maker program and get sleep sorted today. If you found this episode helpful, please head over to the blog and leave us your comments and share with a friend who might take a little nugget of reassurance from this today and show them that you care. Until next week, stay happy and healthy and sleep soundly. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.